Hello, this is Rich with MISO BIM. This tutorial topic is Room Keys. This course is considered beginner level. In this topic, you will learn how to create key fields and modifying key fields. Key schedules are a special type of Revit schedule that enable you to assign groups of parameter values to elements like rooms, doors, and areas based on a shared key value. A key schedule defines specific parameters. Each key has its own values for the parameters. When the key value for an element is set, its parameters are automatically filled in based on the value defined in the key schedule. If the key schedule is updated, the values of each element it is assigned to will update as well. One major advantage in using key schedules is that they can save you a lot of time entering data. This is especially useful for large projects with typical space types as with hospitals and hotels. For example, in a large hotel project, you have a lot of lodging rooms in different price categories. These room types usually have similar designs and finishes, so you can create a key schedule which sets all the finishes for each room type. Then all you need to give a room the correct set of finishes is assign the room the correct key value. Although using key schedules requires some planning, the payoff in time saved and ease of organization is huge for projects like the ones mentioned above. Key schedules closely resemble component schedules except that they are designed to your specifications. Schedules often compromise multiple items that have the same characteristics. A room schedule, for instance, might have 50 rooms with the same floor and ceiling finishes. Rather than enter all this information manually for all 50 rooms in the schedule, you can define keys that automatically fill in the information. If a room is assigned a defined key as that room is added to a schedule, the fields in the schedule automatically update reducing the time required to produce the schedule. Keys are defined using key schedules. When a key is created, it is listed as an instance property for the element. The element then takes on the key's attributes. We will now try to create a key schedule for a room type. To do this, go to the View tab, click on the Schedules button, and select Schedules Quantity from the drop-down menu. View, Schedules, Schedule Quantities. In the New Schedule dialog, first we will select the Room category. As you can see here, that these buttons here you cannot select from under Multi-Category. If you go down to Rooms, now you can choose these. And we're going to select the radio button next to Schedule Keys. This will identify the schedule as a key schedule rather than a building component schedule. Next, you specify the key parameter name in the key name field and enter the project parameter you're using as a key. For example, here we're going to say room type. So under key name, we'll say room type. Then you click OK to create the key schedule. We now need to create key fields or specify the parameter fields that will be driven to the, by the key schedule. For instance, you may want to drive all your finished fields from the key schedule. To do this, you select them from the list on the left under Available Fields and add them to the key schedule by clicking on the green arrow. So here, if we wanted the base finish, the ceiling finish, floor finish, and wall finish, we'll click the green arrow. You'll notice there's one field already added for the key name here at the top. To remove any of these selections, you simply click on the selection and then click on the red arrow to put it back in available fields. Also provided in the Schedule Properties dialog are Move Up and Move Down buttons used to order the selected key fields as desired. To use them, select an item and use the buttons as desired. So click here, and we can click up or down. for the order that will be in the schedule. You can also create new key fields by clicking on the button for this and filling in the desired information. This brings you to the pr parameter properties window which provides options for naming and choosing the discipline. So here for a new parameter, for example here if we wanted to add uh, let's say lighting fixtures or a lighting fixture, we'll create a parameter called lighting fixture. Make sure that the type is text and it's grouped under text. We'll click OK. 
and you'll see now that it is a scheduled field in with the other finishes. And we'll move this up so it's under key name. To finish creating the schedule, click OK. Once the key schedule displays, we can begin to input key data. At the key name field, we enter the name for each individual key. This creates the link between the element and the key parameters. To add a new key, click on the Insert Data Row button on the ribbon. So under here, in Rows, we'll click Insert Data Row. Since we are dealing with rooms, you can give each key a name corresponding to the room type. So for here, since we have a hotel room, let's say we have a living space. And we'll create another data row for um, a bath or kitchen space. Once we create the key names, now we can input the different data for the other fields that are involved in the schedule. Once the key schedule is, is created, next you go to a room in a plan view to assign the key schedule values. So if we go to the floor plan, and we'll select a room in a plan view and go to the properties palette. So let's select a room. You find the key name in the properties palette, which in this case is room type. You select the key name that you want to use, and you'll see here that automatically the finishes are updated, and also the lighting fixture in that key schedule is updated. If you wanted to use the other one, all of those finishes will update as well. And you also notice here that those are grayed out, so from here in the properties palette, you cannot make any changes to those parameters. You can only go back to the schedule and update those accordingly. So for example, if we wanted this to be a different light fixture, whoop, light fixture three is, let's say, we go back to this plan, click on here, you'll see that LF3 is now assigned to the light fixture. As a project evolves, additional keys can be created and applied to these rooms. Likewise, to disassociate a room with, from a key, you simply set its key value to none in the properties pa palette. This resets all the parameter values. So if we come down here under room type, we say none. Now all of those finishes and light fixtures now are blank. And the other thing you can actually do is you can actually add manually to these rooms because there is no key value assigned. But if we go back here and do that, it'll go back to the, uh, the, key, the key values. Managing a few keys in a key schedule is certainly easier than updating a lot of individual elements. Since Revit makes key schedules easy to create and modify, they become a powerful tool for organizing documentation. To modify a key schedule, open the schedule under Project Browser and Schedules and Quantities. You can just do that by cl double clicking and go to the Properties palette. Click on the Edit button next to Fields. In the resulting schedule properties window, you can add and remove fields, create field parameters, and also establish a desired order for the fields using the move up and move down buttons, just like we did when we created a schedule. There are some other tabs found in the schedule properties dialog that are meant to control the formatting and appearance of the key schedule. They can also be accessed directly from the properties palette. That concludes our beginner course on room keys. Thanks for watching.